My name's Declan Cook and I'm one of the motor mobility specialists here at Trolley Group Blackpool. It's very rewarding being a motor mobility specialist to meet so many different people. <laughs> So my name's Miles Roberts, I'm the EV expert here. I've got an electric car myself, my wife's got an electric car. I wouldn't go back to a petrol or diesel car. So once a Motability Scheme customer has chosen to go for an EV, if they want to have a home charge point installed, they just need to wait for the home charge point installer to contact them, either via phone or email. They may ask you to send a couple of photos through of your fuse box location and maybe a photo where you want the charge fitting on your driveway. So the charge point supplier will do all of the paperwork. It's all just a case of just answering their questions. On the Motability Scheme, they will pay for the cost of the installation of the first charger. There are a couple of occasions where customers have needed power upgrades prior to the charger being installed. There may be an additional charge for that, but on the whole, the majority of customers are supported with a free charger for their first install. The customer can have a charger installed in rented accommodation. Usually all they need is a letter um, from the landlord saying that they agree to the installation happening at their property. A home charger can be installed on any exterior wall in the property and also in the garage. Things to consider when looking at where you'd like the home charger unit to be installed. Are there any obstacles in, in the way that will cause obstruction for you accessing the point? And also not leaving the car overhanging, say, off the edge of the driveway or you're too close to it and you've got minimal room to actually access the charging point too. The chargers are fully waterproof, the cars have got the electronics all waterproofed as well, so once it's plugged in, it's perfectly safe. It can be a thunderstorm, whatever, it'll be absolutely fine. The customer can still have an electric vehicle even if they don't have a home charge unit installed at the property. There's a, an app that you can download um, which is called ZapMap. It shows you every charge station up and down the country. Public charging has come a long way in the last few years. There's an awful lot more chargers out there. A supermarket charger, a local leisure centre or car parks or works car parks. We just need to make sure that we, we look at that customer's needs and we make sure that they're satisfied with what they can do. If you're only doing limited mileage, you don't need to charge your car every day. You know, if the car does 200 miles or more to a charge and you only drive 10, 20 miles in a day, then you could get away with charging it once a week or less. Having said that, if it fits for you, plugging it in when you come home and it's fully charged the next day when you come to it, that's fine also. The cars automatically switch off when they're fully charged, so they're not constantly drawing electric all the time they're plugged in. I've got an off-peak electric tariff, so I pay less for my electricity overnight. So I just tell the charger I want it to start at midnight and finish at 4 a.m. and it does all that for me. So that brings the cost of charging right down to about a third of where it would normally be. So that makes what was already a lot cheaper than petrol or diesel even cheaper. Now it's easier than ever to move electric. You know, you get the support with the home charge uh, points. Uh, there's so many more public charge points out there. It's becoming mainstream. You're not one of the, you know, early hand raises. You're actually part of the thing that's growing and getting any momentum and, and becoming a big thing now in the UK.